Hello, I'm Dr. Everett. I'm an endocrinologist and health services researcher at UCLA. Um, and I'm excited today to host this panel of experts discussing disparities in type 2 diabetes. Um, so first, we'll start with introduction of our, um, our panelist experts. Hi. Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Pyle Coley. I'm a general cardiologist and a preventive cardiologist based in Denver, Colorado. I own and run my own private practice. I'm also an associate adjunct professor in the cardiology division at Duke University and at Johns Hopkins University. And I'm an on-air medical expert for a broadcasting company, so I work on television as a medical correspondent. And I'm really excited to be here today to talk about this really important topic. Good yeah. afternoon. I'm Kenrick Duru, a um, primary care physician and health services researcher at UCLA, professor of medicine. And as with Dr. Coley, I'm very excited to be here today to talk about something that's near and dear to my heart. Um, thank you for inviting me to this uh, exciting panel. And uh, my name is Sylvia Rosas. I am a nephrologist at the Jocelyn Diabetes Center, where I direct the Latino Kidney Clinic and I'm an associate professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School. All right, thank you. I'm excited to have an engaging conversation with everyone today. So our first question um, is a general question and I'm um, interested, to know, interested to know, how do social determinants of health, for example, income, education, access to healthy foods, environment, et cetera, manifest in the patients that you see in clinic? You know, I'm going to get started and I'm going to say that this is something that I deal with every single day in my clinic. So I practice in Aurora, Colorado, which is a suburb of Denver, Colorado, and it's a very mixed heterogeneous population. I would say I have the haves and the have nots. And my clinic has a concierge a practice as well as a traditional insurance practice. So I literally see both ends of the spectrum and I see how their clinical outcomes as well as their disease presentations are just so different. And you have patients that come in you know, with low income, it's a whole different conversation in terms of what medications we can use, what types of care they have access to, whether or not they can leave work to go get their blood work done or, you know, go get their diabetic screening done or what have you. The challenges that they have, not just in paying for their medications, but also in managing their chronic disease on a day-to-day -day basis when they're working two jobs, when they have limited health literacy, when they may not have access to good food. So for me as a cardiologist, so much of what we preach, which is, you know, lifestyle, 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 good health and exercise and lots of sleep and making sure you make your body a priority, are things that fall on deaf ears because these are not individuals that can in the environment that they have to exist in, in order to make ends meet, able to reach a lot of those goals. Hmm. No, I, I think you bring a lot of um, valid point um, when it comes to that. And, um, you know, our recommendations as providers really um, need to be tailored to our patient populations because you're, as you mentioned, it may fall on deaf ears if really your recommendations are, are you know, not falling into um, what's feasible in their lifestyle. Dr. Rosas, what, how, how do um, these social determinants of health impact the patients you see? Sure. So in Boston area where I practice, uh, we also uh, see both sides of, of the coin. And we know that in diabetes, uh, education, the lower your education, the more likely you are to have diabetes. Uh, the prevalence of diabetes is there. And the same thing for socioeconomic status. If you have, the better off you are, the less likely you are to have diabetes. And even then, the better control you have of diabetes. So that's why if these, if not, not only they impact the incidence of the disease, but also the complications of the disease. Mm -hmm. And as I was mentioned before, so for example, education. Education is not really like, um, in, in, in what the patient knows or but really how they understand health literacy and how they understand how to take care uh, of themselves and their medications, et cetera. And for example, um, if you live in a certain type of neighborhood, you cannot expect the patient to be walking out and uh, exercising, et cetera, when the environment, maybe they don't have live close to a park mm -hmm. or have a you know, public swimming pool or a gym or something where they could go and uh, do the physical activity that is required for control of, um, um, of their um, 
of their diabetes. And uh, we also see it in patients, uh, like I'm a nephrologist, so I'm gonna discuss a lot about chronic kidney disease, but our patients with chronic kidney disease usually have transportation problems too. It's very difficult for them uh, to come see their providers. So that also um, is important because for access and for the management of the disease, it's more cumbersome for them. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to piggyback off of something you said, because we talk about all these kind of social determinants of health, but even to your point, the environment, air pollution, for example, as a cardiologist, we have underappreciated the impact of air pollution on inflammation, on vascular inflammation, and our your risk for developing atherosclerosis. And we haven't incorporated it into any risk model. But yet, if you live in a neighborhood that's an inner city neighborhood, there's air pollution, you, you're not breathing clean air, you don't have access to HEPA filters to filter indoor or outdoor air pollution, you're using a stove that's out of date and you know not good for your lungs and your heart. These are all factors that could weigh in. So I have to say that as in the cardiology community, we have recently started to embrace social determinants of health by actually including them in our risk uh, equations. So we have these equations that predict who's gonna go on to get atherosclerosis. And only recently have the ACC and AHA actually added your zip code, which is kind of your geography to help determine your social determinants of health. And, and it's tragic that you know where you live determines how long you live but that's a, a fact of life. So at least incorporating that into our risk prediction models is the first step towards recognizing them and therefore starting to address those patients more aggressively. Mm -hmm. I agree. Dr. Duru, how do social determinants of health um, manifest in the patients you see in primary care? Sure. So, you know, I'll say I've been at UCLA for almost 25 years now, and I have a fair amount of patients who are Black and Hispanic. I see, although UCLA is in a predominantly white area, I see a lot of uh, employees and former employees of UCLA. And because of our name, a lot of people come from, you know, 10, 15 miles away to see us. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think as my colleagues were noting, I think the obesogenic environment is the number one culprit here. You know, I think about two people swimming in the ocean. One of them, maybe there's a mild current and they can swim well and, and get to where they want to go. The second person there's a strong current. They could be a poor swimmer or a great swimmer, but they still move with the current. And I think helping them individually is only part of it. We have to deal with the current that's underlying this. And in so many cases, that's access to healthy foods, as was noted, lack of exercise. Um, honestly, uh, income causing you to be unable to afford the kind of uh, supplements or you know uh, healthy food or these kinds of things that uh, more wealthy people can do. So it just has to be a multi-pronged effort. I think what we're doing in the clinic is only a piece of it, but it has to go beyond that. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. There, there are a lot of, you know, more structural or systemic things that have to be addressed um, in addition to things on the individual level.